I'm Jamal Davis. Um, I can really play any position. Uh, from Hopkins High School, going to North Dakota School of Science, and my favorite player is Jamal Crawford. Uh, my name is Kyle Washington. I went to Brewster Academy in Wolfboro, New Hampshire this year. Uh, I'm from Minnesota, though. I'm about to go to North Carolina State, and uh, my favorite player, Joakim Noah. I'm Garrison Gillard. I uh, went to Marinette Christian Academy. I'm a point guard, shooting guard. And next year, I'll attend Minnesota Duluth. And uh, my favorite player is Allen Iverson. My name is Kibu Johnson. I'm a guard slash forward. I go to Blake High School right now, and next year I'll be going to the University of Sioux Falls. And my favorite player is Kobe Bryant. Right, Kyle Harry Carter, shooting guard, Mini High Academy, undecided next year, and Kobe Bryant's my favorite player. Uh, I'm Kashif Hayes. I play point guard. I went to St. Louis Park High School. I committed to Minnesota Crookston. And my favorite player is Ray John Rondo. Clint Hooker, point guard, Park Center. Gonna head to the University of North Dakota. My favorite player is Darren Williams. My name is Trayton Daniels. I'm from Park Center High School. I'm 6'3". Uh, next year I'll be attending the University of Minnesota Duluth. And my favorite player is Kevin Durant. Deshaun Jones, uh, Richfield High School. I'm going to uh, Central Arizona. Um, and my favorite player is LeBron James. Diallo Powell, position guard. Uh, favorite player, Michael Jordan. Go to Woodbury High School. And I'm attending Lake Region in North Dakota. Uh, my name is Bernard Suggs, shooting guard, combo guard. My high school is Woodbury High School, and I'm, I will be attending Gillette College. Who's your favorite player? Uh, Derek Rose. My name is Dion Bradley. I'm 5'11". I go to Highland Park. I'm a point guard. I'm going to North Dakota School of Science, and my favorite player is Brandon Jennings. My name is Harry Sony, Apple Valley High School, 5'10 point guard, uh, going to Rochester Community Technical College. Favorite player, Dirk Nowitzki. My name is Marshane Smith Puke, 6'3. I went to Johnson High School. I'm going to North Dakota State College of Science. My favorite player, KD. All right, my name is Color Russo. I'm a forward. I went to Southern Tech Prep Academy. I'm undecided for my college, and my favorite player is Paul George. Demetrius Katie, I played the one for Southwest High School, and I'm currently undecided for college. Favorite player? LeBron James. My name is Blaine Crawford. I go to the Blake High School. I just graduated from Blake High School. Um, I'll be attending the University of Chicago. Um, I'm a forward. Uh, in high school, I played more of a 5-4, uh, but in college, I'll be playing more 3-4. Um, so small for my favorite player. Um, well, definitely, unquestionably, the best player is LeBron James. And my favorite player, I'd have to say, is either Carmelo Anthony offensively um, or Kevin Durant. Hi, my name is Xavier Hall. I went to graduated from Tartan High School. Um, I'm a point guard. And I'll be attending North Platte, Nebraska next year. Annual. 
Welcome to the 20th Annual Inner City All-Star Classic. I am Troy Russell, here with legendary coach Larry McKenzie. How's it going today, Larry? Not bad, not bad. Glad to be here on this nice uh, Father's Day for this event. Well, you know, we are about to have the uh, Black National Anthem sung, and we'll talk more after this gets done here. Thank you all for being with us. Again, that's Thomasina Petrus. Wow, well, well done, well done. Singing the national, Black National Anthem for on today's family event. You know, Larry, this has been uh, definitely a family affair for the past 20 years. Tell me a little bit about your experiences being a part of the Inner City All-Star Classic. Well, you know, I mean, I, I go back almost to, to the beginning. I mean, understanding, you know, relationship with Kwame McDonald and, and Derek when they first started this event because inner city kids wouldn't get an opportunity to play in the larger All-Star game. So, and, and obviously, I mean, you know, it's when you start talking about Minnesota basketball, uh, just a wealth of talent uh, who's played uh, in this game. And I've been fortunate enough, I think I've coached in the game uh, six times, I, five and one. <laughs> my only loss actually came uh, in the game coaching against my son in uh, okay. um, 2003. So mm -hmm. uh, definitely a great event. And uh, Derek and his uh, crew, including yourself, do a, do a great job of putting on this affair. Well, thank you. And, you know, it, we definitely want it to be the kind of event that people can spend Father's Day with together with their father that want to come out and, and relax and watch some good basketball. And that girls game was fantastic. Were you here in time to no, see that? No, I missed the girls game. So. Um, you missed an outstanding ball game. They, they really uh, competed hard. And I'm hoping the boys come out and compete. Tell me a little bit about some of these young men. Have you had a in any um, opportunity to see you guys play this year? Well, yeah, I mean, no question. Like, right now on the floor is certainly a, a collection of talent. I think, um, you know, uh, Kibu, Kibu Johnson, who played at Blake, uh, we played them this year. They're one of the top teams in cl uh, Class 3A. Uh, I've been really impressed with uh, Quentin Hooker, who's going to be going to uh, North Dakota. Uh, and here's Kyle Washington. Kyle uh, played at Bernil, St. Margaret, before going to prep school and uh, signed with North Carolina State, so he's going to be playing his basketball in the ACC. Awesome. Back row. North Carolina State, and he was he was fouled by uh, Cullen Russo, um, another uh, prep school, two prep school guys going at it. Yep. Tell me a little bit about how that whole prep school thing works um, from high school to prep school. Well, you know, usually, you you know, kids are trying to either get better in terms of grades or improve their ACT scores. And then some kids are just, you know, trying to recruit uh, their standings in terms of, uh, you know, what level that they're going to play at. And so, you know, a kid like Kyle Johnson has benefit. I mean, uh, for Colin Caru Russo, it has, he hasn't been as fortunate. So I, I know at this point he's uh, still unsigned. So, And that's uh, Kyle Washington scoring the first bucket of the game. Team Wisdom is up two to, two to nothing so far in 20th Annual Inner City All-Star Classic. I, I'm going to tell you, I mean, I, I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb early on, and I'm going to tell you Quentin Hooker is probably going to end up being MVP of this game. Yeah, Quentin Hooker is a is a fabulous all-around player. Yeah, he's, a, he's a talent. I mean, got a chance to watch him uh, a few times at Park Center. 
I, I mean, I think he's one of the most underrated players in the state. Well, Russo throws the alley oop and it goes out of bounds. And uh, again, we got a team. We got a team wisdom. And they are with the gray uh, uh, tops. And they are the up 2-0 and we have team knowledge and they have the gold front right now we have team wisdom with the ball and quentin hooker to the basket and he gets his foot back yeah yeah <laughs> i mean already a couple rebounds and a couple points that's quentin hooker team knowledge one thing for sure troy i mean this is a game that you don't need a shot clock <laughs> no you don't you don't Anybody gonna tell you about it if it happened? Oh, layup missed. Russo with a nice outlet pass. Oh, dropped with a nice outlet pass. Uh, the guy took his eyes off the ball. Four to zero is your score. Quentin Hooker with the ball brings it up. Four team wisdom. Kyle Washington now with the ball, guarded by Russo Washington. So what is it? Does he have that kind of game? Can he can Kyle step up and shoot it from three? You know what? I, I mean, I coached against him a couple years ago when he was at Bernil. Uh, he's actually been in prep school the last couple years, so haven't had a chance to see as he's developed. But he, he's certainly a, a, an athletic kid. Um, you know, I don't know if he'll, he'll be a kid that'll go in and get significant minutes as a freshman, but I think over the years, you know, I mean, he'll, he'll, he'll play, he'll get into the rotation. And Russo with the block shot. Russo, an, an intimidating uh, big man in there. So you say Russo has, is still unsigned at this point, huh? He's still unsigned. Yeah, and you know, he's a super athlete. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm not sure, you know, what, uh, what question coaches have about, you know, about his game. But uh -huh. at this point, uh, you know, and, and then, with Troy, we talked a little bit in the pregame. I, I think the, the tragedy in all of this is that a lot of these kids don't realize the importance of academics until it's too late. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, and the, and the thing about it is, you know, these young men, if they can understand, if they can pick it up from here and, and turn things around, if they if they make them, um, you know, if they try and commit themselves. No question. I mean, because a lot of these kids are going to get second chances at, at various junior colleges. Yeah. Right. So they, be, you know, they decide to become focused. Oh, when Russo misses the dunk. Wow. Alley you on the play. Kick ahead to Washington with the ball inside. Oh, Washington goes up strong with a two-handed dunk. Yeah, I think guys are a little nervous right now. Seeing Guys seem to be playing with a little jitter. Yeah, definitely can tell the nerves. Demetrius Katie with the ball stolen by Hooker, who I don't think he'll ever be nervous. No, no, he's just not that. Yeah, see, and I, there he goes, Hooker with the ball. He's just got too much, too much attitude, too yeah. much confidence to be and, nervous and, and on any such stage. Such a great floor leader. I mean, every time I watch this kid play, uh, I've just been really, really impressed. Yes, me too, me too. You know, he had a tough a go of it in the state championship no, no game. No question, no um, question. You know, but, you know, that, that he was playing against another fabulous player in, 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 in Tyus Jones, so that was an outstanding ball game. Yep, and you, and you know you always need a little help. So, yeah. I, I, you know, I think in, in that situation, Tyus maybe had a little bit more help than he did. But. Exactly. Exactly, and, you know, and, and playing on that stage in that building is tough. Is tough anyway. It, you know, it really is. It's a tough building to play in if you're not used to playing. You're not it. used to play. Exactly. Like team wisdom with the ball. Nuni Omai from Matamida. I had a chance to coach against him this year. He's a fabulous ball player out of Matamida. And oh, to the basket, Xavier Hall lose the ball out of bounds. Xavier Hall out of Tartan High School. Tartan had a, a nice season this year. Yeah, you know, they started out pretty strong. And then, and, you know, again, I mean, they played some of their best basketball early. Uh -huh. And so they did not quite finish the way that they've uh, wanted to, but a lot of us didn't. So. Yeah. You know, only one, only two teams can finish. That's right. You know, right. And, <laughs> and only one team. And only gonna one be team's going to be. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So out top, team wisdom for three. Oh. Harry Sony from the state champion, Apple Valley Eagles, kicks it out. Oh, nice put back by Kasim Smith out of Johnson High School. Johnson and the state tournament team again this year. 
Garrison. Oh, three-point shot missed on the play. Put back up and in by Kahari Carter from state champion Minnehaha Academy, son of the great Minnesota Golden Gopher, Randy Carter. Yeah, it's probably gonna take these guys a little bit of time to get used to these rims. Yep. Kasim. And that was a Kasim Smith's pew with the ball. Again, the score is 10 to 8 right now in favor of Team Wisdom over Team Knowledge in the first half. Harry Sonny with the ball. Harry Sonny also a good football player. Again with the ball. Oh, oh nice move. Nice oh, move. Blaine. Blaine Crawford. Blaine Crawford gets a shot blocked by Nuni Oma, but the foul is called. Yeah, you know, he really wasn't an offensive guy for, for Blake, but uh, got it. Uh, I mean, he really did a job around the basket in terms of putbacks and rebounds. So. Yeah, and that's what he does best. He, he, he gets in there and he gets the the, the dirty work and, the, and the, does the small things well. Yep. And I thought he improved quite a bit his senior year. Yeah, he definitely did. He definitely did. Much more coordinated, much more efficient with his game. And Blake had a good team this year. They did. Yeah, they did. Made it well. Actually, they ended up, uh, they lost in the first round of the state tournament, but they did win out section. Yep. So right now, we got Team Wisdom with the ball. Coming down with the ball, we have uh, Jahari Turner. Jahari Turner handling against, oh, he's fouled, but he did not call it. Smith Pugh with the ball pushing up. Lane has been offensive. Oh. Uh, he's, he's, uh, Lane Crawford I, is I taking it right at, <laughs> right at him. Right at him. Right at him. D Bird getting all over the referees on that. Did, didn't like that call, D Bird, the floor announcer. Been doing this for a long time. Long time. And they got the right guy doing it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he enjoys it. Yeah, he enjoys yeah. it. 10 to 10 is your score. Blaine Crawford headed to the University of Chicago. Yeah. And probably probably a good fit for him. I mean, he's a highly uh, high academic kid who's probably going to get a chance to, you know, play a little basketball and get a great degree from a great college. Nuni Omai for three. No good. Smith Pugh ahead. Diallo Powell, oh, Diallo Powell finishes the layup. For a team knowledge, they're up three, coach by. They, they didn't get the crowd going. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they wanted to see a little bit more than that. Oh, and he's fouled. So. Hey. 13 to 10 in favor of Team Wisdom. Team Knowledge, excuse me, is up 13 to, 13 to 10. 20th annual Inner City All-Star Classic. So Rob Mestis is one of the coaches. Tell me a little bit about Rob Mestis. He's got, he had his first year as a head coach this year, uh, coming as an outstanding basketball player in his own right. Well, you know the thing about it, first of all, I mean, Rob was a point guard, probably one of the best, you know, when we start talking about the history of Minneapolis City Conference basketball, I mean, Rob is one of those guys that, you know, would be one of the all-time greats. Uh, outstanding high school basketball player, had a really good uh, college career at Miami of Ohio. Um, and so, I, you know, I, I got a chance to coach uh, against him in the first round of our, our section. But I thought Rob did an outstanding job going back in to, you know, rebuild the program as alma mater. High basketball IQ uh, guy. And he, he's going to do a great job, you know, loves the game. So I think he's getting things, you know, that's going to uh, put, put Roosevelt in a position to be competitive. Well, while we were chatting about Rob, uh, Quentin Hooker went to the basket and Colin Russo caught it up around the top of the square, seeing some uh, outstanding um, um, defensive play here. And then Blaine Crawford missed the dunk on the other end, And right? Blaine, yeah, missed the alley-oop on the other end. Or was, or was that Kyle Washington? That might have been. I believe it was Blaine. I think so, yeah. Quentin 
Hooker for three. Oh, these guys go way up for the rebound. Deion Bradley. Oh, Deion Bradley. There you to go. Cullen Russo with the finish. A little better, a little better, yeah. A little better. Well, I mean, he's athletic. He can go get it. Yeah, there's no he doubt about can go it. Get it. No doubt. This is the kind of game where he can shine, you know, this up and down. Kyle Austin, that's a nice, that's a, you know what, that's a nice uh, uh, matchup between those two. Oh, oh no question. You know, and, I, and actually, this is a great matchup for for Colin Russo because, I mean, obviously he's playing against a kid that's going to be playing at, you know, one of the highest levels. So, yeah. I mean, he really want to do a good job and prove that he can play at this level. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, oh. went to the basket. That's Trayton Daniels. Try to reverse dunk the ball. Trayton Daniels on the center. Got hung a little bit there. Got hung a little bit. For three, nothing but the bottom of the net for... I believe that's Deion Bradley. Deion Bradley, yeah. Deion Bradley. Nice out. looking shot. Oh! Oh! Cullen Russo. All right, this is Colin. LeBron James on Diago Spitter type block there. Yes, he get an <laughs> opportunity to make a little name for it. <laughs> highlight material right there. Highly, yeah, buddy. That was that was Definitely above, the, that was above the rim. Yes. <laughs> what a play. Deion Bradley with the ball. Bring up the court. 23 to 12. Knowledge is going, taking a big lead here to the bowl. And Deion Bradley is foul going to the basket. Been aggressive. Good move. There, yeah. Walter Bond came and you know Walter Bond came and spoke to the guys on Friday. I, it was, I, I, you I know, it is very, very this. inspiring. Yeah, I, all, always. So always. we'll have a we'll have an opportunity yeah. to talk to Walter at halftime. Halftime. All right. Walter Bond, the great University of Minnesota basketball player, now motivational speaker. So have you had a chance to hear him do any of his motivational speeches? Absolutely. Me and Walter go way back. I actually, Walter is one of my mentees. Oh, okay. Back when he was in college at the University of Minnesota. Awesome. He's an awesome man. Awesome yeah, definitely. Um, and we just missed a dunk by Trayton Daniels. Just dunked the basketball. This game is going up and down. It's going so fast. Quinn Hooker, oh, nice, oh, nice, oh, nice look. oh. <laughs> oh yeah. look at him, Kyle Washington, Good look. Nice I, I look. love Quinn Hooker, though, I mean, he yeah, just, he, he done, he done fight the he, guy. he has a presence when he takes the floor, and no doubt about it, Color Russo shoots the three, Russo steps out, you know, that's too bad, I really hope this kid Russo uh, uh, finds, what's up, Lamar? Another three being taken. Thank you, thank you. Game is picking up a little bit. Game's picking up. Bradley, you know, Bradley averaged almost 30 points a game at Highland Park this year. He's a leading exactly. scorer. Right. One of the leading scorers in the state. Right. Yeah, he, uh, I didn't get an opportunity to see a lot of the St. Paul team. Yeah, you know, I coaching at, coaching at Como Park this year. I got to see more of, of him than I would like. <laughs> <laughs> he put up 30 points on us each time. Oh. oh. Robin Jackson in the building. Robin Jackson of the Robin Jackson Play of the Game Award. And uh, right now, I don't know if that block, that well, block could be the play of the game. Well, we've, had quite a few. we've had quite a few. We've had a, we've had a few so far. Yes. No doubt about it. A timeout. What? There's a timeout in the All-Star game. We ain't seen too many of them. Yeah, especially, I mean, the uh, game's not getting away, so. 28-19, there was, in the girls' game, there was a one timeout call. So. That well, was coach, coaches got to get involved a little bit. Coaches like, yeah. feel like they need to get involved a little bit. It's been an outstanding ball game so far. Uh, 28 to 19 in favor of Team Wisdom. So I hear uh, congratulations to you are in order for your new coaching position at Minneapolis North High School. Now tell me, what's it, what's it feel like going from Henry <laughs> where you were a legend to now going into a legendary program in Minneapolis North. You know what? I mean, I, I tell everybody, I mean, if Rick Pitino can go from Kentucky to Louisville, <laughs> and, uh, you know, much the same, and hopefully with the same result. So, yeah. you know, he was able to win that national championship at Kentucky and then uh, recently the same thing at, at Louisville. But, you know, uh, it, it's, it's, it's interesting, you know, to, 
uh, to go across the street to your rival. But I'm, I'm excited. I'm glad to, to be back in the city, and I think we're going to be able to do some, some great things at Minneapolis North. Well, as, as an alumni of Minneapolis North, I'm excited about uh, having you there and excited about uh, getting that whole thing back to where, you know, where it belongs. And I'm, I'm sure you're the man for the job, and we're all excited as, as alumni to have you. Congratulations. And appreciate Welcome appreciate to the Polar it. family. Yes, yes. yes. You, you know, know, great basketball tradition, and that's what I'm trying to get the kids over there to understand. You know, I mean, that, that was my measuring stick when I started my coaching career. You know, Minneapolis North did a great job, the, the Polar tradition. So, yes. well, we're going to get there. We're going we're gonna to get there. Oh. And here we go back the other way. Colin Russo oh, all the way to the basket. No good. And that's Blaine Crawford with that the putback. Be, he's been active. Yeah, Blaine is out here competing. I'm loving to see it. Blaine's a great kid. Oh, shot taken and oh, missed man, no. by Kyrie Carter. Kyrie Carter. Kyrie, Kyrie Carter says the ball was tipped. Oh, it was. But the referee no says no. No question it was tipped. I believe it was tipped off. Oh, no question. I saw it. We don't, you know, <laughs> these referees are are definitely all-star game material. They're, they're all-star <laughs> all <-star> referees. <laughs> all-star <laughs> game referees, that's for sure. Three points. <laughs> Three point shot taken again by uh, Cullen. I'm sorry, that's Xavier Hall. Xavier Hall took that three-point shot. Harry Sony off, taking the three. And, that, and that's not necessarily his game. Not at all. You know? Not at all. Yeah. Not at but, all. But, but I've been, every, everybody say, in this game, you know. It's everybody's game everybody, in this game. Everybody's <laughs> game right, right. It's everybody's game in this game. 31 to 19 in favor of team knowledge. Kibu, Kibu Johnson. Kibu Johnson out of Blake. Another Blake kid in the game. This got to be the first time in our history that we've had two kids from Blake. Kibu's on the bench. I'm not sure. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. That was Kashif Hayes. Kashif Hayes. I'm sorry. Kashif Hayes. We have two. We have, we have, we have uh, double numbers. We have double numbers. We have two 23s. Oh, okay. Uh, so, yeah. So we, might we do just... have, I mean, like you say, it's obviously the first time two kids from Blake playing in it. Exactly. The that shows the diversity of our kids going to the higher level academic schools and, you know, and those, I don't know about high, higher academic, but definitely more money. Oh, no question. Yeah. And so, no, and, and they are. Yeah, let's be honest. I mean, they're great. Uh, Academic institutions. So exactly. No, no doubt about it. No doubt. Blaine Crawford on that rebound. Kasim Smith ahead. Diallo Powell. Diallo Powell was a nice up and under. Nice move there. Diallo Powell. 35 to 19. It's your and, score. And Diablo, he put himself in position to be a contender for MVP. Yeah, he's having an excellent ball game. Yeah. Taking advantage of his minute. No doubt about it. Garrison Gillard from Maranatha. You know, hey, we have a we have a player from Maranatha. We haven't, you know, we're getting players in this game from all over the place. Maranatha Christian Academy. Well, that tells you in Brooklyn what's, Park. What's going on with our kids? I mean, they're you know, a lot of kids are getting out of the city and going to, you know, all kind of different schools. So, you know, we are we are hoping at Minneapolis North that you can change some of that. Well, I think we've started. You know, I mean, and, I think when people, some of these kids stay home. When, when the alumni, when you look at our class of kids that we got coming in, you know, I think we're doing it. But there's no question. I mean, one of my goals is to cut off the border, you know, exactly. and keep some of these kids, uh, at least the ones that we want. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but the thing is, we want, you know, we want them all because we want to build the school back up to the numbers we had back when I went there, 11, 1,200 kids. We want it back up there. Oh! And I think that's on the drawing board. You know, it's going to take a little while. But it's going to take some time. Yeah. It's going to take some time. That was, uh, that was Xavier Hall going up high for the dunks. For team knowledge, team knowledge is really putting on the clinic here. Team Wisdom better pick it up. Yeah, they, uh, I mean, uh, they'll be out of this real quick. And that's Nooney Omar with the miss. Again with, oh, Diallo nice. Powell ahead. Xavier Hall steps back for the three. Bam, bam. Buckets. Good. Oh, Xavier Hall's yeah. putting on a show. And again, Another Diallo time Powell out. involved in, in that basket. Nice, nice pass, nice and look. Broderick Powell, Coach Powell is not happy. He's <laughs> Coach Powell is referring, the, is coaching the game, just like he <laughs> like, did in the state championship. No, no game. question. No question. <laughs> he is.
Well, you know, I mean, you, when you coach, you in, in this game, I mean, you don't lose it. And I mean, this is about community, so you don't yeah, want yeah, to you be yeah, yeah. on the losing yeah, exactly. end of this. You exactly, know? exactly. You don't. And and at the least, you want to make sure you're competitive. You know? Right, right. And if you get beat, you want to get beat going down to the going wire. down to the wire. Right. Exactly. But you but definitely you know, don't want to be the coach that got blown out. <laughs> in a game like this, in a game like this, you can the, you know you can get the ebb and flows and the runs can come. Oh no, no, no question. I mean, we're gonna see a run. We'll definitely see. Oh, he traveled there. Good call. Yeah, yeah. No, we'll we'll see we'll see again. Like you said, the game of runs. So game of runs. Forty to nineteen. You know, it's, it's looking like some of them uh some of the championship games uh, we've seen with the Heat and Spurs. Uh, are you enjoying that that series right now? Oh, I, <laughs> I well, know, you know I am. I'm a Heat fan, so yeah, me too. I me yeah. too. You know, and I, what I don't understand, coach, and maybe from your point of view, what do you attribute all the LeBron hate to? I mean, the guy is is flawless in what he does. I haven't seen. I mean, he's he's good in the community. He's good with the kids. He's not getting in trouble. Next on the team player, he's unselfish. But yet, people don't like him. You know, I, I don't understand it. You know, that's a long, long discussion. But I think part of it is it's because he's the type of guy that really thinks for himself. Uh -huh. and, and so, uh, and, and like you said, I mean, you know, a lot of people talk about guys being selfish and all of that. But here's a guy who, what, put lost 20 million or, or gave up 20 million dollars for an opportunity to win a championship. Uh, what, what people, you know, say is, is unusual. But I, I, I just think again, I mean, the, the fact that he left Cleveland, and, you know, probably a bad PR move in terms of the decision. But beyond that, like you say, I mean, the guy does all the all the right things. So exactly, I mean, you got you know you got guys like Kobe who made the huge mistake he made, and guys all over the league that made that huge mistakes that they've made and done things they've done character-wise. And you get this young man who's who's mature beyond his beyond his years. Right, right. You know, and and what I get frustrated with is the black community and why we treat them the way we do. You know, and. And that, that to me, but, but you know the thing me. of it is, I mean, and, and I understand the choice, but but unfortunately, in our community, man, it's something about being successful and winning. Uh -huh. And instead of uplifting people, mm -hmm. you know, we we tend to mm -hmm. jealousy, envy, and those things come in. But like you say, I mean, you know, I always I, I tell kids all the time. I mean, you look at LeBron. I mean, you know, watch the way he dressed, the way he carries himself. He's articulate. He's I mean, he he understands business. I mean, all, I mean, he's a family. Every, Man, he's taking care right. of his sons. He's everything the that you, everything, you know, everything that you, you want, want your right, kid to be, right. he is. He is but yet, right. but yet, and yet, but yet, people, but yet he's getting uh, tore down. Yeah. Every I saw every single uh, state in our union wants the Spurs to win, except for Florida. Yeah. You know, and so I mean, you look at some of that as the as the underdog factor and all that too. But it just amazes me that how we don't embrace it. It, 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 it makes me think that if he was white, would the white community treat? Their hero, like we, we know, we, I, I, I mean, you already so. know what the answer is. No, we, <laughs> you I know, mean, right? If he was Dirk Nowinski, it would be you exactly. Know, no, exactly. no question. No, a a lot, 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 lot different. So, mm -hmm. you know, well, I'm sorry for getting off of my LeBron tangent here, but it's 40 to 21 at halftime in favor of Team Knowledge, and we are about to have our halftime facilities of dunk contest and things like that. I am going to get uh, some interviews here. Um, see if we can get. We got Walter Bond coming down. I'm gonna have a little conversation with Mr. Bond. Mr. Bond, uh, we'll uh, try to get him to tell his story a little bit, and it's a fabulous story. Um, like you said, uh, Mr. McKenzie has a piece in the success of Mr. Bond, from what I hear. How you doing? How you doing, Walt? Uh, all right, all right. Walter Bond. All right. All right, all right. I have uh, the great, uh, legendary uh, Walter Bond with me today. How you doing today, Walt? I'm great, Troy, man. It's Father's Day. My kids and wife loved on me today, and <laughs> it's a good day, man. It's a good day. It, it is a good day to be able to spend with your loved ones. You know, I was telling, I was telling our audience a little bit about you before you got on. Just, just share with us your story a little bit, man. I got to hear you speak the other night, and I'm, st and I'm still inspired by that. Tell, tell me a little bit about your story. Well, you know, thanks, Troy. I mean, I had a very unique uh, childhood. Grew up in Chicago, in the inner city. Uh, dad was a high school principal. Mom was a teacher. All my family are educators. So I grew up around sports, but education was always most important. And I actually attended my father's high school in Chicago's inner city. 
Uh, I was the only kid in school who actually paid for lunch. <laughs> and, uh, you know, went on to uh, become a high school basketball star. And the thing I liked about it, Troy, was being the principal son, I had to produce on the athletic field and in the classroom. And mm -hmm. it was a lot of pressure on me. My father was very charismatic, very demanding. And faculty and students alike looked to me, you know, to be this excellent person. There was a lot of pressure. But it taught me how to really be excellent every day without relaxing. And, and it was a lot, of, you know, and I enjoyed that. And so the rest of my life, I just wanted to be excellent. You know, I never wanted to have failure, never wanted to let anybody down. And uh, that kind of environment, that kind of culture really forced me to develop and came here to the U. Uh, freshman year, sat on the bench, you know, didn't play much. And just like any kid, I wanted to play in the NBA. And I began to work, you know, and Coach Haskins sat me down and, you know, told me about my strengths and my weaknesses. And every off season, I worked at my work and, uh, you know, played eight years of pro ball. So not many guys can say can they say played that. in the NBA and mm -hmm. they didn't even start in college. So that platform has really created an opportunity for me to be a, a, a nationally renowned motivational speaker. I'm hired by companies like you know, uh, General, uh, not General Mills, but General Dynamics, uh, Meriprise, AXA, Allianz. I do a lot in financial services. I've had my own uh, TV show on the Food Network where I was the host and I can't even cook. You know, how about that? <laughs> how you on the Food Network can't cook? <laughs> Man, listen, God is good, right? God is he. Is, is he ever? Yes, sir. Now, for you to be able to um, persevere the way you did, you know, like you said, you got hurt your senior year still able to 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 make it on a roster what does it take you know to be able to have that grit and that perseverance that we all need you know to achieve our goals you know a lot of things you know the, the first thing i want to talk about is the gift you mm -hmm. know i mean i have parents call me all the time and they want their kids to play college ball and maybe going on to the to, to the next level my first question is can your child hoop uh -huh. And oh, he's pretty good. Like, no, no, no. <laughs> you know, we're talking about the NBA. Can yeah, exactly. your child hoop? I mm -hmm. mean, can your child go? Mm -hmm. and, you know, I'm watching these kids out here, and, and some of them are going to go D2, D3. Very good ball players. But when you're talking about the NBA level, I mean, you're really talking about a gift. You're talking mm -hmm. about something you've been born with that you need to develop and need to cultivate. But to play at that highest level, you know, it's not okay just to be okay or decent. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when I was younger, people thought I was too old. You know, mm -hmm. check his birth certificate. And, <laughs> you know, exactly. and, and I was dominant at a young age. I had a high IQ, and I was more athletic. You know, um, you look at a guy like LeBron James. Exactly. I mean, we were just he has a high him. basketball IQ, mm -hmm. and he's the most gifted athlete to ever play in the NBA. Uh -huh. So when you watch him play, that dude is gifted. Uh -huh to play at that level and to dominate at that level. So any athlete that wants to play in the NBA, you know, any parent listening, my first question is, is your child gifted? And if they're not gifted to play basketball, God gave them some gift. Gave us all gifts. You know, it we might be engineering, mm -hmm. it might be leadership, it exactly. could be the sing. You know, and as a motivational speaker, I just thank God that I found another gift. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, Something that I can do. use the rest of my life, now, absolutely. Now, you said your dad was a principal, so I'm sure that had a lot to do with who you are as a person. But for those of us that weren't gifted with a parent who, who understands the educational process the way your parents obviously did, your mom was a teacher yeah. and your dad was a principal, what can we instill in our kids to be able to give them the kind of passion that it takes to be successful in the classroom? Well, you know, I was very fortunate, very, very fortunate to have a two-parent family that were very uh, supportive, very demanding. You know, my parents got that belt, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? <laughs> you know, we were old school country folk from down mm -hmm. south, you know, wasn't no talking back, wasn't no, you know, mm -hmm. kids should be seen and not heard. You act like you had some sense, you know? Mm -hmm. You know, I see these kids walking around now disrespecting adults and pants falling off. You know, they have no chance to be successful because they don't respect authority. So that's why a guy like Larry McKenzie is such a legendary figure here in the state of Minnesota because he's more than just a basketball coach. Exactly. I mean, you're talking about really a parent, you know, mm -hmm. and, and, and the thing that made my father a legendary high school principal in Chicago, he understood he was not just the principal. Mm -hmm. He understood for probably 70% of the school, he was their dad. Exactly. You know, and, and literally, mm -hmm. I mean, they looked to him as a, as a, as a, 
male role model. I mean, he was a man's man. And unfortunately, a lot of our kids in the inner city don't see that. Yes. And just seeing my dad operate, seeing him walk in the hall, seeing him acting like a gentleman, I think it inspired the boys and it inspired the girls because if they don't see what a man is, they don't know how to act accordingly either. So I think my father set a phenomenal example. And not only did he impact my life as a child, he impacted thousands and thousands of kids who would do programs and, and, and assemblies and, and, and banquets to honor my dad. I mean, it would just, you know, it'd be like 15, 20 kids just on their own would go get a banquet hall in Chicago and do a dinner and pay out their own pocket to say thank you to my dad. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure Larry gets a lot of uh, emails and accolades. Mm -hmm. We need more leaders. We need, we need more pillars. But most importantly, I think we need more husbands. Yes. You know, and we need more dads, not fathers. We need, we need dads. dads. Exactly, exactly. Well, you know. I'm preaching this Sunday. You know, <laughs> keep preaching. Hey, you know, I, I, wish, I, wish we could, uh, I wish we could sit here and do this all day because I, I, I also, I always uh, learn so much when I talk to both of you uh, young men about life. You know, being a uh, uh, being me and you are the same age, but Larry's a couple years older than us. So and I've known, I, let me say this: I've known Larry a long time. Uh -huh. Larry and I are in the same fraternity. And back when I was at the U, you know, 18, 19, 20 years old, I got a chance to meet Larry McKenzie. And you need those kind of guys in your life because mm -hmm. even though you were raised right, yeah. you're still in college. Exactly. You know, and you and you want to do what college guys do. And having a Larry McKenzie in my life is just. Reminds me of an uncle. Exactly. Like, come on, man, you know what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. And uh -huh. since I had the background, I was like, man, you, yeah, you know, I'm, yeah, I know. I, I <laughs> should. Yeah, you're right. My bad. Yeah. yeah you know, exactly. so even though you, you, you're raised right, you still want to, you know, do what college kids do. And I just thank God for Larry McKenzie, you know, being able to be an influence and impact in my life when my dad is not here in Minnesota with exactly. me. So, a guy like him, Clem Haskins, we had a great support network infrastructure, and that's why we all went on to become husbands and dads. Exactly. And we need more of those in the community. Well, thanks a lot. Well, thanks a lot, Walt. Man, I appreciate you coming and stopping by and talking to me. We set it up on Friday because I just had to let the, the audience hear your story and, 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 and learn more about, about you and, and what we have in this state as far as uh, uh, a man of your stature. And uh, congratulations and all that you do for everybody. All right. Well, thanks for having me. You Happy know I like Father's to talk. Day to you. you better take this microphone from me. Oh, man. But thanks again, man. <laughs> and uh, Minnesota's my adoptive home. You know, I call Minnesota my Chicago without the drama. So I, I, I got to let you go because you got to go over and judge the dunk contest. Awesome. Okay, I'm on my way. Where <laughs> so am I going? You just got to go over to the table there okay. and, get to, and judge the dunk okay. contest. All, All right. right. Thank Thanks, Walt. Appreciate right. it. Larry. All right. That's... All right, that was the great Walter Bond. Uh, we're going to try to get uh, another legendary figures over here in Coach Louis Boone. Boone. Coach Boone. If we can get Coach Boone over, oh, it looks like he has a little knee issue there. Maybe he can't. Oh, he can probably slide he over. Probably slide over. Coach Boone. All right, all right. This is uh, wow. Now this is a we have uh, Coach Louis Boone. Now a little bit of history here. Uh, ought to get. Coach Boone. Okay. All right, man. Good to see you. Good to see you it's great too. to see Coach Boone. Now, a little bit of history. Coach Boone was the, one of the first coaches. The coach was the first coach, him and Coach Cazzoni, who I'll have on next, were the first, first coaches ever to coach in the Inner City All-Star Classic and uh, was from the state championship Washburn team back in 1994 uh, was, right? Well, I'm just appropriately here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, <laughs> Coach right. Boone. Now, we went even farther back than that, coaching against each other in AU and oh, all yeah. that, and we just had a great time. You know, tell me about what this game has meant to you, you know? Well, just basketball in general? Or yeah, basketball in general in, in the inner city, yeah. Okay, this game specifically, the inner city all-star game, uh, it, it, it actually brought forward a major flaw in uh, acknowledging the state basketball players. Uh, it was generally, um, we were left out, basically, the inner city kids. And what Derek Rubin and at the time Ralph Crowder did was to highlight the, uh, the injustices in terms of uh, kids getting recognized as quality basketball players. Now in 94, they only had two classes. And they had a large school and small school classes. And uh, Washburn um, 
was uh, the winner, state champion, 94, large school. St. Agnes was a uh, small school state champ. And shortly after that, there were multiple championships. Multiple, exactly. <laughs> so they didn't want us both winning. Exactly. Uh, being inner city uh, teams. So what Derek did uh, for those uh, accolades, our kids, neither St. Magnus or Washburn, none of the kids were on all state teams. Yes. Statewide. Uh -huh. And so Derek gave them a, a format to be acknowledged as uh, all-star players, as well as the, the out-state uh, acknowledgement of uh, players. And, and, and that has been awesome. And the family atmosphere, I think, that, that we've been able to build, having the game mm -hmm. on Father's Day and every year and being able to have, um, you know, the whole family atmosphere of bringing everybody together and galvanizing the community and you as a father of, 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 of some great sons. Tell me a little bit about um, how that's been being able to raise your sons up in the game of basketball, being the man that you are. Well, it's been invaluable. You know, it, uh, they played multiple sports at that time, mm -hmm. uh, but basketball was their, their stick. They uh -huh. loved basketball. Exactly. And uh, gave them a schedule, gave them something uh, that to do in terms of uh, time management, etc., cetera, and uh, the, uh, the, the camaraderie with their peers was invaluable, and, you know, that's how we grew up. Exactly. Now, Aaron was on that 94 team, correct? Right, yeah. Yeah, and that was, the talk, talk a little bit about that team and about that year. Well, those guys grew up together playing ball, and, um, you know, they traveled, they were on uh, the AEU teams together, and uh, they grew up playing Clyde Turner camps and all that stuff. Yeah. So it was, uh, and, and being involved as in, in terms of uh, their elementary and junior high and high school. That was, yeah, that it was. was uh, it was a special group. Now, what is it like to coach talent? I mean, that was one of the most talented teams the state has seen in a long time. I mean, oh, from top only, to bottom, you guys were just so talented. Well, thank you. Not only the talent, uh, the unselfishness, mm -hmm. you know, and that kind mm -hmm. of uh, gave uh, the people who are making the assessments as to <laughs> how valuable players were, mm -hmm. they didn't realize that, you know, we had kids that could play anywhere. Yeah. But they were so, uh, they could share the ball, they could share the accolades, and, it, you know, we had five guys averaging in double figures, and that wasn't by happenstance. Exactly. You know? exactly. So they shared that, that uh, limelight. Well, awesome. That's awesome. Well, we look forward to, to celebrating you and that team today, if this being the 20th anniversary. And um, thank you so much, man, oh, for all you've done for it. us throughout the years and all you've done for the community. And thank uh, we you. appreciate it. It's great seeing you again. It. it really was. Good to see you. Thank you. And happy Father's Day to you again. Thank you. Again, that's the great Louis Boom. And uh, we are going to uh, take a break here, um, and we will come back here um, in a few minutes. This is Troy Russell with the Inner City All-Star Classic.
Thank you. Everybody, let's give one more big round of applause for this group right here. This is Big Bad Saturday, y'all. I appreciate your love.
All right, we're back here at the Indian City All-Star Classic. I have legendary coach Dick Gazzoni <laughs> with me today. How's it going today, Dick? Good, Troy. Hey, you know, I, we appreciate you coming out and spending your Father's Day with us. I know there's other family issues you could be doing right now, so we really appreciate you coming out and sharing this with us. What is it, you know, meant for you to be one of the first, you know, coaches to really, you know, help the kids in the inner city? Well, you know, first of all, it's hard to believe it was 20 years ago, but, you know, time does fly, and it was kind of a groundbreaking, legendary type of time uh, that Louie and I and all the players got together, and uh, Carter and Kwame and Derek Rubin put this all together, and it, it was really kind of a neat way to end the season because we both had won state championships, and it was a great way for the kids to showcase their talents and really put together a great event that's uh, obviously just been building and building over the years, and hard to believe it's been 20, but it was a great experience. It was, it was. Now, you are currently the head boys coach um, right now where? Hill Murray. Hill Murray. Yep. Hill Murray still, okay. I wasn't sure if you had, if, if you had, uh, uh, I had heard you was leaving or retiring or something, but you that's know, not the truth. Well, I guess it's, the older you get, those rumors keep uh -huh. happening each year, but uh -huh. no, I'm enjoying it. Uh, it's a great school. We've had some really good success the last four or five years, and uh, we hope to just keep doing what we've been doing and build upon what we've done. Uh, we've unfortunately had to face Johnson in the playoffs, and they've had great teams, and we've uh, had great battles with them in the playoffs over the last few years. But, uh, you know, it's just been a, a great experience being at Hill Murray after being at St. Agnes for a number of years and then coaching in the city at Southwest for three years. And um, you just play it year to year as you get into your 60s. and uh, But it's still enjoyable. I love it. Yeah, well, you know, I'm just, I'm, we're pleased to have uh, uh, Dick Gazzoni with us today because, you know, St. Agnes and, and St. Paul Central and, and, and those um, St. Paul rivalries you guys used to have back then was just exciting for all of us to watch and growing up. Tell me a little bit about the difference in the landscape of, of where basketball is now versus where it was back in 94. Well, you know, it, it's changed a little bit, but it hasn't changed a whole lot. Uh, you know, Hopkins played Washburn for the state championship and uh, Washburn beat him at the end. You know, going from uh, two classes back then to four classes now, um, you know, it's changed things a little bit because uh, a lot of people would like to see the, you know, the class 3A team play the class 4A team for the championship or 2A or whatever, it doesn't matter. But I, I think AU has really changed things a lot. Kids are playing a lot more ball. They're playing uh, 12 months out of the year instead of, you know, whatever they, they played back. I think a lot of kids played two or three sports, and a little bit of that is uh, not happening now because kids, if they want to really excel, they've got to play a lot. And uh, AU has really helped develop kids' uh, offensive talent, and, you know, we're seeing that with the great class coming up next year in Minnesota with uh, the seniors that will uh, be you know, showcasing their talents next year. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited, you know, for the state of basketball in the state of Minnesota and the way it's growing. And, and, and you know, there's no way, you know, we could have got to where we're at, you know, without people like you, you know, in our history. So we really appreciate it. Really appreciate what you've done. And um, uh, good luck to you and congratulations to you. And uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again in the future. Hopefully you'll come back next year and see the... Uh, the 21st in the city all star okay. classic. Yep, thanks a lot, Troy. Thank you. All right, yep. my friend Dick Gazzoni, uh, head boys coach at Hill Murray High School. And uh, looks like we'll get started here in the second half of the Inner City All Star Classic. 40 to 21 is the score in favor of Team Knowledge. Uh, and it looks like we're going to have an excellent uh, second half. We'll be right back with you for the start of the second half of the Inner City All Star Classic.
All right, second half of the Inner City All-Star Classic has begun. 40 to 21 in favor of Team Knowledge. Shot. Probably gonna take these guys a little bit of time to warm up. Just some time to warm up here and get started again. Oh, Xavier Hall, I believe that was the shot there. Smith Pugh with the ball. Shot taken by Garrison Gillard from Team Wisdom. Team Wisdom has got some making up to do. Coach, you think they can do it? Well, they're gonna have to get, get you know, they're gonna have to make some shots here pretty early, so. Yeah. And not off to a good start, 0 for 3. <laughs> That's for sure. And Diallo Powell back there doing things like he did in the first half. That's Sony with the ball. Oh, Blaine Crawford trying to take Nooney Omot one on one. Not going to make it happen. Back out to Sony for three. That's the way to get back in the game. The team shoots you back in it. Yeah, but you got to make some on the other end, and they haven't done that as of yet. So, yes, sir. And uh oh, uh -oh here we go. Oh. Dunks keep on missing. <laughs> Smith Peel. Block. Oh. Nice block on that on the play there. Look like a defensive all-star game right now. Yeah, that was uh, Smith Peel on the block and Smith Peel. Oh. Then Smith Peel comes back and shoots the air ball. ball. So Troy, question. I mean, you've been around this for a long time and uh, obviously been involved for the last 20 years. A as you look at the talent, what's, what's your assessment? Is Minnesota basketball, boys basketball, getting better, holding study? I mean, what's your assessment you know, regarding for me, the talent? For me, it goes from year to year, you know? Some years it feels like it's getting better, some years it feels like it's getting worse. You know, like, I, I, you look at next year's class, I think we got some pretty good players coming in. Well, I think that'll be you the know. best class since the 2003 class, you myself. Know, yeah, so, you know, I mean, yeah, that class, you know, with, uh, I believe the last class that came through with that 2003 class was, was unbelievable. Um, right, I know. mean, when you think about, uh, you know, Cam Taylor, James yeah. Davis, Lawrence, Longa Longa, oh, yeah, Calvin Hill. Martin, and all. It was I a mean, lot of good players. Uh, Chris Humphreys, Dan yeah. Coleman. I mean, it, I mean, well, yeah, like I say, you know, most of those guys went on to play, you know, high major uh, college basketball. And, profe and professional and basketball. So, yeah, yeah you know, professional overseas overseas basketball, right. All that, so, you know, you, you look at a kid, like even an under, underrated kid in that class, Jamar Diggs, who was. Well, no, know, I'm talking about 2003 now. That would have been. Oh, no, 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 I'm thinking of, two, I'm thinking of 2000. 2000. Yeah, that, that was Diggs seven, is that seven or eight? Six, I think. Is that six? Six, yeah. Because I think that would have been Al Nolan's class with uh, yeah, and, and Cam Rundles and Jamar Diggs. Yeah, now that was, to me, that was the last great class we've had. Uh, the 2003 class was better probably, but the 2006 yeah. class, there hasn't been a class that good either since then. So, But like you said, I mean, it just goes up and down, up and down. We've been down, I think, the last couple of years. Yeah, I, I, that means, you know, yeah. I just, you know, I haven't been real, you know, enamored by the whole class. Been some good players, well, you know, but as a whole class, you know. And, and I think next year, though, we'll, we'll see some, yeah. you know, yeah. obviously it's it's a pretty, pretty highly recruited class, lots of talent. Exactly. So, you know, something to look forward to. No, and, and that's for sure, you know, and I think, you know, I think what I attribute, you know, a lot of that to is, you know, we just, you know, everything that seems a little bit watered down, you know, the, you know, with uh, with this talent is so spread out everywhere. That everybody I, I, has, I think that's what it is. Everybody I mean, has one or two kids here and there, so we're not able to build that that Henry North three kind of right, right, you don't get there exactly. by JV even getting the game yeah, type yeah, that yeah. aren't yeah. happening anymore. So yeah, no, no, no you know, question. No question. So but hopefully, you know, some of that will, you know, start to change a little bit. We get one. <laughs> so but again, oh, 20, 42 to 22 is the score. 20 point lead right now. Straight down the court is Pew, Team Knowledge. Oh, but we may be looking at one of the lowest scoring in the uh, inner city all-star games that we've seen. In a long time. If they, right, time. if they don't get going here in the next 15 minutes. Jamal, Jamal De, uh, Xavier Hall just made that shot. Xavier Hall. With the ball again. Oh, tip from behind out of bounds, looks like. This has been a 44 22 is your score. We got our all-star, our all-star, our all-star referees engaging with Mr. McKenzie. <laughs> Yeah, we may have to go add, add like some, uh, you know, when I was in the ABA, we used to have 
some four-point plays. We might have to do some of that to get the score up. Now, you played in the ABA, correct? I did not. I you just coached not. in just the coached, ABA. Oh, you coached in the in ABA. ABA? Yes. I did not know that. Yeah, I, I no. thought you played. No, I just coached okay. one year. One year in the ABA. So. Now, what, what, what franchise is that with? With the, the Minnesota Ripneys, the year after I left uh, Patrick Henry High School. Okay. Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, the minor I'm, I'm, league. I'm, I'm, yeah. Okay, I'm thinking of. No, uh, no, no, I'm not back. The old, not back I'm in the, the old ABA. That's not, what I was thinking. No, 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 not back in the no. That's what I was thinking. <laughs> that a four-point play and you know All some of those things. Stuff, you know, we I was watching. They had the uh, documentary on Dr. J the, uh, last week. That's what made me think of it. Yes. Uh, you know, it's just phenomenal. About I remember those how days. They, how I mean, they revolutionaries the game. The Miami Floridians and the Virginia Squires and the Kentucky Colonels and yeah, it was a definitely different kind of basketball. Exactly. I mean, and they, they, you know, I mean, that's where the. NBA and everybody else got the three-point shot from. Exactly, exactly. I mean, they did so many things revolutionary. Like NBA wasn't Duncan then. You know, Duncan no, came from right, the ABA. Right. You know, and all the guys. No, they did. It's revolution. Yeah. But uh, you know, it's kind of hard to sustain one one league, not alone oh, uh, two yeah. back then. No so, question. Yep. Yep. 44-24 is your score. Kyle Washington at the line shooting two. He missed That's about three. <laughs> three free throw, I mean, three uh, layups in a row down there. Wow. And I missed two free throws. It didn't have a very good, didn't have a very good uh, sequence there for Mr. Washington. No, I, I tell you, it's going to be tough uh, trying to come up with an MVP, I mean, when in this low-scoring ball game. Yeah, it really is. It really is. I tell you, uh, these guys, are, at least they're competing and trying to win. I mean, that's the... Nice pass there, back door, and the finish. Nice finish, Demetrius Cady from Southwest on the finish. Nice pass from Diallo Powell. Quinn Hooker, I'm surprised Quinn Hooker hasn't taken over more. Yeah, me too. Quinn Hooker's taken over more and uh, in this ball game. So, this has been this has been uh, the 20th annual Inner City All-Star Classic. Here at St. Thomas, University of St. Thomas. Now, have you ever, have you had an opportunity to see, uh, have you had an opportunity to see uh, St. Thomas? Yeah, I did. I mean, I got a chance. Uh, I'm a big, big fan of John Towers. I mean, I think he's doing an excellent job. Over nice block there by Cullen Russo. Uh, yeah, I think he does an outstanding job. Uh, one of my kids uh, will be playing over here next year from Holy Angels. So. Quentin Hooker, oh, between the legs. Oh, he missed the shot, though. Going back up strong. Kiwoo Johnson from Blake. Haven't, Goes haven't, up strong. haven't seen him. Uh, yeah, he hasn't done a whole lot this game. No, he has. You know, there's, there's, there seems to be some anxiety that set in early, yeah, and they I haven't mean, been able to get rid of it. Yeah, these guys just have not. Right, they just haven't gotten gone at all. So. Yeah. And I think they're kind of losing the crowd a little bit here. Yeah. It was a very, very good crowd here today. Very good crowd uh, here. People came out, supported the game. I, like I can tell you. Sunlight. I can tell you. Next year, you'll have. Uh, yeah, you're gonna be standing room only next year. You, know, you don't get here, you won't be able to get in. Yes, sir. It's gonna be uh, gonna be an interesting game. Uh oh. Quinn Hooker off the backboard. Oh, I thought he was passing that. I think he was trying to pass that off the glass, trying to pass it back to Kyle Washington, who did eventually get it and dunk it. Russo with the ball. For three, Kyle Washington. You know, Kyle Washington got the kind of body where you think he can fill out a little bit and get yeah, have a big time to get one body at, at some point. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if he, he red shirts next year at uh, NC State. And like you say, put a little weight on him and get him ready to play in, in a very, very competitive league. Yes, sir. You know, and that's the thing is that's you know that's a competitive league, and if he can if he can uh, play there, 
But I, he looks like the type of player that would be a much better player under uh, control circumstances. Right. So, you know, he, yeah. and, and this doesn't look do, like right. the kind of game, you know, that he'll yeah. excel in. Yeah, some kids don't play well in all-star type games. Oh, I'll tell you. Man. But, you know, uh, he is the only one scoring yep. on that Wisdom team. Obviously, right now, the leading MVP candidate. Well, no, because this team's on a losing it. team, so the, it'll probably, it probably looks like it's going to, uh, looks like Diallo Powell, possibly going to be Cullen Russo. Smith, Smith Pugh with the ball. Smith Pugh out of Johnson High School. Pulls the three. Does he make it? Off the glass. Didn't call it. I don't he think he called call it, Coach. It. I don't know. He did not call We're it. We're going to have to ask him after the game if he called it. 51-30 is your score with another timeout. I don't know how many timeouts you get in the All-Star game. I think he used his quota. Yeah, I think he, yeah. <laughs> uh, nice crowd we have here enjoying our, our festivities. I don't know if they're enjoying it, but they're here. <laughs> Inner City All-Star Classic. All right, all right. Bringing the ball up the floor for Team Wisdom is number four, Garrison Gillard out of Maranatha. Oh, Blaine, Blaine Crawford on the block. Crawford has had a pretty good game. Too. He has, and he's playing hard. He's playing hard. Out. Diallo Powell for three. Oh, they hit the uh, shot clock and out of bounds. Uh, this uh, this uh, MA, this MIAC has a pretty good basketball every once in a while, doesn't it? They, they do. I mean, obviously, St. Thomas sits at the top of that but you know if you look at division three the last uh you know two or three years i mean if you look at carlton college has been a really good team uh st john's is always one of the the better teams so it's it's really you know one of the top i i'd have to say i mean really when you look at uh, minnesota and wisconsin they're probably two of the better division three uh, uh conferences in the country yeah, but well, St. Thomas is, you know, I mean, they, they've they been sitting at the top, been dominant uh, of this uh, conference for probably the last 10 years or so. Yeah, I mean, they just, they always seem to be able to recruit those shooters. Every time I see them play, it's like, it's like, I mean, their shooting percentage, they just make everything they throw up. Yeah, you know, they get up and down. I mean, they, uh, they, they, they do put the ball up, and they've got some really good shooters. Of course, Tom, you know, they, they do a really good job of recruiting. Oh, I think Blaine was going to dunk that. Yeah, he was going to try and dunk it anyway. Gillard with the ball ahead. Oh, back to Gillard. And he misses uh, the layup. Oh, wow. Tell you, this has not been uh, no, no, a very not. impressive All-Star. <laughs> oh. It had to be a foul there somewhere, but oh. oh wow. Diallo Powell with wow. the miss. What is going on? There's, got, there's something going on in this building. I don't know. what. When T-Dub is missing dunks. Just, these guys can't right. make layups. Yeah, people are shaking their head yeah, as they everybody, leave. Everybody's yeah, it's like, <laughs> what is going on? Got Harry Sonny with the ball. Oh, he lost, and he loses it, of course, to Gillard. Uh-oh, back to Gillard. He hasn't made a shot. And oh, there's Gillard, it's a nice finish. Nice Finally finish. made a shot. Oh, oh, I think that might have been clean there. Looks like uh, Kashif Hayes got up there and blocked that. Well, yeah, I think, I think we're going to have an inner city all-star record here. I mean, can Team Wisdom get to 50? Wow, I know. 50 points in an all-star game. And, 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 you know, I mean, and we've seen, uh, I mean, we've seen kids over the years come in and score 32 by themselves. Not by themselves, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. You know, we've had some we've had some performances for the ages. No, in this no game. question. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's been uh it's been fun to watch. Remember that that year when your son was playing and we had the uh we had Chris Humphreys and James Davis yeah. going at him, you know. Back oh yeah, forward. I mean I was out again, uh Lawrence and Long Cam Long and Long 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 <laughs> Dan, yeah. Dan Coleman. That's what I'm saying. I mean yeah, yeah. you know, Kevin Henderson. Yeah, yeah. man. That, that was quite quite a class of uh, basketball players that was that year that was I mean you could bring we could put together we could put together a pretty good CBA team out of that no no question sure. no no question yeah. Blaine Crawford with the finish 
So now, is Lawrence, I know Lawrence is doing his music. Is he thinking about playing basketball anymore? Or is he just you know, Lawrence had major hip surgery on both hips. Oh, he did? So, with, yeah, he had the Johnny Flynn surgery on uh, both hips. So he's retired. I mean, he, okay. you know, uh, he, he, I mean, if, it, if the situation was different, as he said, if it was a NBA money, you know, but he, Lawrence got the, a chance to play two years in Europe. Uh -huh. Played two years in the D, in the D League, so uh -huh. you know. But he's doing training right now and still doing some things with the game. But, but no, he's officially retired. So. so Johnny Flynn had that same surgery. Yeah, Johnny Flynn had it on one hip, and obviously, you know, it, it ended his career. And he, you know, it but, did. Yeah, okay, yeah so that's you know, what happened to Johnny. Flynn. So that's what happened to Johnny Flynn. Yeah, Lawrence. So Johnny Flynn had it on one side. Lawrence had the same. It's called a hip impingement. He had it on both sides. Oh, wow. And so he was forced to retire at 26. Okay, okay. Well, you know, he still got to do some things and most people wish they could. Oh, no they question. Could. You know, he had a, yeah. you know, I tell him he scored 1,400 points in his college career. You know, uh, got to the NCAA tournament, won a, won a uh, Big 12 championship at Oklahoma. So, no, yeah, you know, most more than a lot of kids. No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Is that, you know, that was you know, fun to watch in college, fun to watch in high school. You know, so. Oh, oh, Blaine Crawford yeah. caught I mean, the dunk. He may have just won MVP on that one. Right? Yeah, yeah, that was that was awesome. Oh, three. And the subs are coming. More subs are coming in. Jamar, J Jahari Turner on that three-point shot. 57 to 33. Troy, I think we can get a few guys and go score 33 points. I, you know, <laughs> I, I don't know. I probably could give my best shot. <laughs> I'd have to be a passer. I'd have to pass to you. <laughs> and I'd have to stand underneath the basket. I can still score underneath the basket. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, there we go. Now we get some buckets in there by uh, Team Knowledge is running away with that dip on that. Uh-oh. Uh Finishing Smith Pugh. Looked like we had a, a, a new guy come in in the second half. Uh, Deion, uh, what's the, uh, Jones from, uh, oh, Deshaun Jones. Deshaun Jones from Richfield, right. Didn't play much in uh, the first half. He changed it, he put a different, oh. Who, there we go, a three-point shot that went in. 61 to 38 is your score. Tyus Jones, they showed him on the screen, gonna be a phenomenal player. Oh, and a dunk. <laughs> All right, 61 to 40. Quinn Hooker now with the ball ahead. Oh, pushing it. Nice pass. Quinn Hooker. Keeble Johnson. Keeble Johnson. 63-42. Kashin. Smith Pugh. We obviously know the outcome of it. Yeah, this game is this game is as good as over. We got a uh, we got a two minutes left to go in the 20th annual Inner City All Star Classic. Again, if you want a copy of this, uh, you can uh, get with SPNN SPNN call 651 298 8906. That's 651 298 8906 for a copy of this or any other SPN SPNN programming. Nice dunk here by Kyle Washington. A little too late, though. A little late. A little late, but it's old. I see Deion Bradley trying to throw it between the legs. Oh. Jones again. 67-24 is your score. 44. Feels like 24. Oh, air ball. So, Coach, what do you got planned for the rest of your Father's Day? Well, I'm, I'm going to get out of here and relax a little bit and sit back and 
hopefully we uh, watch the Heat take a 3-2 uh, lead back to Miami. <laughs> yeah, me too. That's that's what I'm hoping. That's what I'm hoping happens too. Uh, as I go. But it's been a great day. Great day. It's, it's been, you know. Oh, there we go. I don't know why this young man, I think this young man showed up at halftime. I don't think he was here. No, he was here earlier. I just, he was. just a lot of guys. I guess they just didn't work him into the... He went up in 36 seconds left to go in the game. Thank Again, thank everyone for coming and for tuning in. If you're tuning in right now, if you're watching on tape, we thank you for watching. Nice inner man. City All-Star Classics and the score is 69 to 48. 20th annual Inner City All-Star Classic. And uh, everyone, I hope everyone's enjoying this. It was a beautiful summer day. Good. Kyle Washington. Couldn't get 60 points, 70 points. Kyle Washington to the basket and makes the layup to get him to 50. They made the 50. Made it a 69 to 50. Is your score 19 point game. Here comes a three by Smith Hugh. Hughes going to shoot the three. And off the mark. Final scores Team Knowledge 69, Team Wisdom 50. Mr. McKenzie, want to thank you for. How you doing? How you doing? Good. Good. Mr. McKenzie, we want to thank you for, for coming out and, and, and sharing your wisdom with us today. We Whoa. appreciate it, and good luck to you with my pollers. My, my pleasure. And I'll and I tell you, I mean, we, uh, as I said earlier, very excited to be at North High, and uh, I look for a quick turnaround. Quick, quick turnaround. So. Yeah, and, and, and we look forward to uh, you turning that program around and getting us alumni back in the stands and, you know, making sure that we continue to support you and support the program. Well, we appreciate it. Always fun, Troy. Again, all right, well, I want to thank everyone for, for tuning in to the 20th Annual Inner City All-Star Classic. I'm Troy Russell for, for Larry McKenzie. Everybody have a great night.